Microsoft Azure is a growing set of cloud-based computing services offered to corporations, developers, government organizations, and anybody else who wants to build an app or run a business on the internet without having to install and manage hardware or server software. But this much information is not enough to understand the complete cycle of its concepts. And that is what I'm here for. Hey everyone, welcome to this new video on Simply Learn on Azure Tutorial for Beginners. In this video, I'll take you around crucial Azure services and their in-depth concepts. So without doing any further ado, let's start with the video. But before diving into the Azure world, let's have a quick introduction to what is cloud computing. So cloud computing is the distribution of computing services via the internet, including servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, and intelligence to provide faster innovation, more flexible resources, and economies of scale. You usually only pay for the cloud services you use, which helps you cut cost, run your infrastructure more efficiently, and scale as your business grows. So this was all about cloud computing. Now let's start with the start of this video, that is Azure. First, let's understand what is Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure is a growing set of cloud-based computing services offered to corporation, developers, government, and anybody else who wants to build an app or run a business on the internet without having to install and manage hardware or server software. In recent years, it has eclipsed both Windows and Office in terms of sales, making it Microsoft's fastest growing business sector. The Azure platform is designed to assist organizations in overcoming obstacles and achieving their objectives. It supports a wide range of industries, including e-commerce, finance, and a number of organizations. And it is open source compatible. This gives consumers the freedom to use whatever tools and technologies they want. Now coming to how Azure works, customers who subscribe to Azure get access to all of the services available through the Azure interface. These services allow subscribers to create cloud-based resources such as virtual machines and databases. Azure comes with five different customer support solutions from Microsoft, basic, developer, standard, professional direct, and Premier. The scope and cost of these customer assistance programs vary. All Azure accounts get basic assistance for free. However, Microsoft charges a premium for the other support options. Developer support is $29 per month, $100 per month for standard assistance, and $1,000 per month for professional direct support. Microsoft does not provide pricing information for Premier support. Now that we have covered the basics of Microsoft Azure, let's dive down and explore the services offered by Azure. Well, there are multiple services offered by Azure, like machine learning, analytics, containers, compute, databases, developer tools, DevOps, hybrid, and multi-cloud, identity, integration, internet of things, management, media, migration, mobile, networking, security, storage, web, and virtual desktop. But among these, we will be discussing only a few which are widely used by organizations and individuals around the world. And we will be vividly discussing these features in depth. And these services are compute, containers, databases, identity, security, networking, and storage. Now let's start with the first one, that is Compute. Azure Compute is a service that allows you to run cloud-based applications on demand. This CPUs, memory, networking, and operating systems are among the computing resources it supplies and the resources are on demand and can be accessed in minutes or even seconds 
you only pay for what you use and for how long you use it. Azure offers a variety of computing solutions for development and testing, application deployment, and data center expansion. Linux Windows Server, SQL Server, Oracle, IBM, and SAP are all supported by the service. The following are some of the most well-known services. Azure Virtual Machines, Virtual Machine Scale Sets, Azure Container Instances, Azure App Service, and Azure Functions are also serverless computing. Now let's discuss each of this one by one. First is Azure Virtual Machines. Virtual machines are software-based computer simulations. A virtual processor, memory, storage, and networking resources are among the resources available. Virtual machines or VMs run on operating system and allow you to install and run software much like a regular computer. You can use and operate the virtual machine as if you were sitting in front of it by utilizing a remote desktop client. Azure Virtual Machines allow you to co construct and operate virtual machines in the cloud. Infrastructure as a service is provided through virtual machines. And they can be used in a variety of ways. Virtual machines are an excellent solution when you need complete control over an operating system and its surroundings. All of the software running on the VM can be customized just as on a real machine. Also, when you are running custom software or hosting arrangements, this capability comes in handy. Now coming on to the next one, that is Virtual Machine Scale Sets. Scale Sets are an Azure compute resource that may be used to deploy and manage a group of identical virtual machines. Virtual Machine Scale Sets are meant to provide real auto scale when all VMs are set up the same. Virtual machines do not need to be pre-provisioned. As a result, developing large-scale services for big computing, big data, and containerized workloads is easy. More VM instances can be added as demand grows. VM instances can be withdrawn when demand decreases. The procedure might be human, automated, or a hybrid of the two. Now moving on to the next one that is Azure Container Instances. Container Instances are Azure compute resources for managing and deploying containers. Containers are virtualized application environments that are lightweight. They are built to be dynamically formed, scaled and stopped. On a single host machine, you can run many instances of a containerized application. Then comes Azure App Services. You can create, deploy, and scale enterprise-grade web, mobile, and API apps on any platform with Azure App Services. While employing a fully managed platform to handle infrastructure maintenance, you can meet stringent performance, scalability, security, and compliance requirements. A platform as a service solution is App Service. And following that, we have Azure Functions. When you simply care about the code that runs your service and not the underlying platform or infrastructure, functions are great. They are frequently used when you need to respond to an event, typically via REST request, a timer or a message from another Azure service, and the job can be accomplished rapidly in seconds or less. Now that we have completed all the services offered by Compute, let's proceed to the next one that is containers containers are a type of virtualization system you can run several containers on a single physical or virtual host in the same way that you can run numerous virtual machines on a single physical host unlike virtual machines you don't have control over a containers operating system containers are lightweight and designed to be built scaled out and stopped dynamically Whereas virtual machines appear to be instance of an operating system that you can connect to and administer. Containers are built to help you to react to changes on the go. Containers allow you to swiftly resume in the event of a crash of hardware failure. 
Docker is one of the most popular container engines and Azure supports it. Containers offer these particular services. Container instances, Azure Container Services and Container Registry. Container instances are the quickest and easiest method to operate a container in the Azure without needing to manage virtual machines or use any extra services. It's a PaaS service that lets you upload your containers and have them run for you. Moving on to the next one are Azure Container Services. Azure Container Services or Azure Kubernetes Services allows users to manage, deploy and control operations of Kubernetes container. Orchestration is a term used to describe the process of automating, managing and interacting with a large number of containers. Azure Kubernetes Service is a comprehensive container orchestration service for distributed architectures and high volumes of containers. And then comes Container Registry. A container registry is used to ease container development by easing storage and management of container images. Now that we have covered containers and the services offered, let's move on to the next Azure service, that is databases. Azure Database is a fully managed platform as a service database engine that automates the majority of database management tasks such as updating, patching, backups, and monitoring. Microsoft has released a managed instance aimed at on-premises clients. So if we have any SQL databases on-premises that we want to migrate to Azure without any complex configuration or ambiguity, we can use managed instances. The most prominent services and the database service are Azure Cosmos DB, Azure SQL Database, and Azure PostgreSQL. Now coming to the Azure Cosmos DB. Azure Cosmos DB is a multi-model globally distributed database service. You may increase throughput and storage across any number of Azure locations around the world in an elastic and independent manner. You can use any way of several common APIs to get single digit millisecond data access. Throughput, latency, availability, and consistency assurances are all covered by Azure Cosmos DB service level agreements. Now, Azure Cosmos DB enables schema-less data, allowing you to create extremely responsive and always on apps that can handle constantly changing data. This functionality can be used to store data that has been updated and maintained by users all around the world. So next comes Azure SQL Database. Azure SQL Database is a relational database based on the Microsoft SQL Server Database Engine's most recent stable version. SQL Database is a fast, dependable, well-managed and secure database. You may use it to create data-driven applications and websites in your preferred programming language without having to worry about infrastructure. So SQL Database's PaaS capabilities allows you to concentrate on the domain-specific database administration and optimization tasks that are vital to your business. SQL Database is a fully managed service with high availability backups and other typical maintenance features built in. Microsoft is in charge of SQL and operating system code changes. You don't have to worry about the infrastructure. Coming to the next one, the Azure PostgreSQL. Now, Azure Database PostgreSQL is a cloud-based relational database solution. The server software is based on the open source PostgreSQL database engine's community. When you use Azure Database for a PostgreSQL, your experience with tools and knowledge comes in handy. Moreover, it has various benefits like in comparison to on-premises resources, there is built-in high availability to ensure that your apps are always online. No additional configuration, replication or cost is necessary. 
Pricing is straightforward and adaptable. You can expect consistent performance thanks to a pricing tire that includes software patching, automatic backups, monitoring, and security. Within seconds, scale up or down as needed to ensure that your service adapts to usage. You can grow computation and storage independently as needed. Automatic backups can be customized and restored to a specific point in time for up to 35 days. And enterprise level security to safeguard sensitive data in transit and at rest. This protection includes data encryption on disk as well as SSL encryption for client server communication. Now we have covered one more crucial service offered by Azure. Now let's move ahead and explore another service that is security and identity. These two services are integrated, so we will be discussing them together. Identity management in specific is a process of authenticating first and then authorizing using security principles. And it involves controlling information about those principal identities. It provides these important services, Azure Security Center, Key Vault, and very important aspect of Azure service, that is Azure Active Directory. Azure Security Center. First, Azure Security Center is a collection of tools for monitoring and managing the security of virtual machines and other cloud computing resources in Microsoft's public cloud. The Azure Security Center is accessed through the Azure Management Interface by administrators. They may find a number of security tools in the Security Center to help them prevent, identify, and respond to possible security risks to the Azure deployment. To use the Security Center, organizations must have an Azure subscription. Next is Azure Key Vault. Azure Key Vault is a cloud service for storing and accessing secrets in a secure manner. Anything you want to restrict access to, such as API keys, passwords, certificates, or cryptographic keys, is a secret. Vaults are managed and hardware security module pools are two types of containers supported by the Key Vault service. Software as well as HSM backed keys, secrets, and certificates can be stored in vaults. Only HSM backed keys are supported by managed HSM pools. Coming to the next one is Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory or Azure AD is a cloud based identity and access management service from Microsoft that allows your employees to sign in and access resources such as Microsoft 365, the Azure portal, and thousands of other SaaS apps. Internal resources such as apps on your company's intranet and network, as well as any cloud apps built by your company. Azure AD is required for sign-in and identity protection in Microsoft Online Business, such as Microsoft 365 and Azure. If you sign up for any Microsoft Online businesses, you will be given access to Azure AD, which includes all of the free services. Now we covered one more Azure service. Let's move on to the next service, which is networking. Now, Azure provides the scalability performance, high availability and enterprise grade security. You need to satisfy your most extreme workloads requirements with more than 1,65,000 miles of private fibers across 60 plus regions and 170 plus network POPs around the world. Customers will have a consistent low latency experience thanks to service and integrate smoothly across on-premises, multi-cloud and edge locations. So when you use Azure Networking's network as a service, you can concentrate on delivering your application logic. Network Watcher, Express Root Monitor, Azure Monitor, or VNet, Terminal Access Point are all Azure Network services that can be used to monitor your network resources. So the first one we will talk about are Virtual Network. 
Azure Virtual Networks allow Azure services such as virtual machines, web apps, and databases to connect with one another, with internet users, and with on-premises client computers. An Azure network is a collection of resources that connects other Azure resources, isolation and segmentation. Internet communications communicate among Azure resources, communicating with on-premises resources. Route network traffic, filter network traffic, and connect virtual networks are some of the core networking features provided by Azure Virtual Networks. Next, we will talk about VPN Gateway. A virtual network gateway or VPN Gateway is a form of the virtual network gateway. Azure instances are installed in Azure Virtual Network instances and provide connectivity for services such as a site-to-site -site connection connects on-premises data centers to virtual networks, a point-to-site link connects individual devices to virtual networks, and a network-to-network -network connection connects virtual networks to other virtual networks. So now moving on in Express Route, with the support of a connectivity provider, Express Route allows you to expand your on-premises networks into the Microsoft Cloud over a private connection. You can connect to Microsoft Cloud services such as Microsoft Azure and Microsoft 365 using Express Route. An any-to-any -any IP VPN network, a point-to-point -point Ethernet network, or a virtual cross-connection through a connectivity provider at a co-location facility can all be used for connectivity. So Express Route connections are not made through a public network. As a result, Exp Express Route connections provide more reliability, quicker speed, constant latencies, and higher security than traditional internet connections. Now we have reached the last service offered by Azure that we will discuss, storage. Microsoft Azure Storage Platform is a cloud storage technology designed for current data storage scenarios. A massive scalable object stored for data object, disk storage for Azure Virtual Machines, a file system service for the cloud, a messaging store for reliable communications, and a NoSQL store that are all available through core storage services. The services offered by R Azure Blob Storage, Azure Table Storage, Azure Queue Storage, and Azure File Storage. So the first one is Azure Blob Storage. Blob Storage is a Microsoft Azure service for storing binary big objects made up of unstructured material like text, photos, and videos, as well as associated metadata. Blob storage objects can be accessed through HTTP or HTTPs from anywhere in the globe by users or clients' applications. Blob storage objects can be accessed using the Azure Storage, REST API, Azure PowerCell, and Azure CLI, or a client library for Azure Storage. Coming to the next one is Azure Table Storage. Large volumes of structured data are stored in Azure Table Storage. The service is a NoSQL data store that takes requests from both inside and outside the Azure Cloud. Now, Azure Tables are great for storing non-relational structured data. Table Storage can be used to store and query large amount of structured non-relational data and it will scale as demand grows. Moving on to the next one, that is Azure Queue Storage. Azure Queue Storage is a service that allows you to store massive amounts of data. Authenticated HTTP or HTTPs call allow you access the messages from anywhere in the world. A queue message can have a maximum size of 64 KB. A queue can hold millions of messages up to the storage of accounts overall capacity limit. Queues are widely used to build a backlog of work for asynchronous processing. Now coming to the last one is Azure File Storage. 
Azure Files provides fully managed cloud files that can be accessed via the industry standard server, message block, or network file system protocols. Cloud and on-premises deployments can both mount Azure Files file shares at the same time. Windows, Linux, and Mac OS clients can access SMB Azure file shares. Clients running Linux or Mac OS can access NFS Azure file shares, additionally using Azure file synchronization. SMB Azure file shares can be cached on Windows servers for rapid access near where the data is used. So now that we have covered all of the important services offered by Azure and their functionality, Let's dive deeper into, into the concept and look into how Azure is better than other cloud platforms. So, first is Microsoft Azure Pass gives developers the environment, tools, and building blocks they need to create and deploy new cloud services quickly. It also provides the critical DevOps linkages required for monitoring, maintaining, and fine-tuning such apps. Microsoft handles much of the infrastructure management behind the scenes with Azure Pass. As a result, Azure deployment allows for a singular emphasis on innovations. Second is the compatibility of Azure with one of the most beneficial feature of Azure, and that is the .NET programming language, which gives Microsoft a significant advantage over AWS and the rest of the competition. Azure was designed and tuned to work seamlessly with both old and new apps built on the platform framework for .NET programming. Now, Azure was built using the security development cycle, which is a leading assurance process in the industry. It has security at its core, ensuring that private data and services are kept secure and protected while on Azure Cloud. Fourth is, on Azure, hybrid apps like can be created that take advantage of resources in data centers at the service provider end or within Azure itself. To increase usability and speed, Azure now offers a greater selection of hybrid connections, such as virtual private networks, caches, content delivery networks, and express route connections. Fifth is, if a company already utilizes Microsoft software, it is likely to be covered by Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. It is eligible to discounts on Microsoft software because Microsoft frequently modifies these agreements to reduce Azure pricing. As a result of the Enterprise Agreement, Businesses can often get large discounts for adopting Azure. Let's have a quick demo for Azure services for their better understanding. So in this demo, we will first create our resource group and an SQL database for it and a server also. So first you need to log in in your Microsoft Azure account and then click here and go to resource groups. Click on create button. So for subscription, we will have our free trial option and uh, give it a name according to our requirement. Like for now, I'm giving it uh, Azure Demo Simply. And the region according to your uh, area like where you want to deploy your apps where you that you will be publishing here and click on review plus create here you will get all the information that you need to review that all the information here are correct or not and then click on create button it will take a few seconds Now you can see this notification that your resource group is created and here you can see that uh, your the name of your resource group, the subscription and the location. So now what we need to do is we will create a SQL database for it. Here you can see all the details. 
so to create our sql database uh, we will first need to create a web app so where we need to go is we will go to app services and here we will click on create button and again we need to give it a, a first we need to select our resource group so we will click on the resource group we just created and we will uh, give it a name so here uh, i'm giving it as your demo simply web app and click on code so that uh, while publishing we can upload our code and runtime stack we can uh, select the language we have created our application in again the region and click on review plus create so here you can just review all the details you just uh, mentioned it's taking a while yeah so here you can see subscription resource group which you just created name you gave and uh, the publishing runtime stack now all you need to do is click on create you can see it's initializing deployment Uh, you need to be very careful with the region because sometimes it may create problem while deploying You can see deployment is in progress Now you can see your deployment is completed so you just need to go to resources coming back to the page you can see uh, the name of your application you just created now as we are done with the web app uh, now we need to create our uh, SQL database so coming to the SQL database page we will click on create button again the subscription we have to give free trial and the resource group we just created because that's what where we are publishing our web application and that's where we need to create uh, attach our database with so now we need to give a name to our database so here i'm giving so i'm giving it azure demo sql db and uh, here you can see that we don't have any items to select as a server so we will click on create new here we will create a server for our sql database and uh, give it a name so i'm giving it a name this is sorry I'm giving it a name as your simply server as you can see it's already taken so I need to change it so let's take as your demo server yeah so now we are done with the name again for location we need to mention the region so here you can see I've selected now coming here we have to enter our admin login so here i'm giving my organization's name mm -hmm. 
I need to give it a password. Then confirm password. And click on OK. So here you can see that database name has already been attached to it the database we just created for elastic pool we will go for no option only and uh, then again we will click on review plus create so here you can see all of the information that you just mentioned whatever privileges you will have with your sql database and click on create <laughs> You can see uh, deployment has been initialized. It's going to take a while. You can see the status constantly and track them. Here you can see deployment is in progress. And in a while you will see the name being flashed over here. Now you can see your deployment is completed and in deployment details, you can see your database being created and the demo server you just created. Now, going back to your resource group, the one we created at first, clicking on the name, we can see all the tasks we just did, like creating a web app, creating a database for it, and also a server for your database now all you need to do is publish your uh, application that you created for yourself and deploy it over here so this is all in our demo i hope you liked it and learned something from it and see you in the next tutorial well this was all about microsoft azure and its revolving concepts I hope you find this video informative. We have almost reached the end of this video. If I missed anything important, do let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new from it. If you like this video, then please do hit the like button. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates and videos from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.